Hey y'all, it's Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com. And today I have a Cricut tutorial for you. I had a lot of people say when I unboxed my Cricut Explore Air 2 that they were a little bit intimidated by the Cricut Design Space software. And so I thought I would create a series of tutorials that covered some of the very basics of the software. And today we are talking about welding and grouping. So I am going to show you my design space software and we'll talk about how to cut out an image like this all connected versus cutting out individual letters. Let's go. Now, when you click the text tool, then it gives you the text box and you can add in whatever text you're working with. Today, I'm working with the name Amanda and it is automatically grouped together, which means you can move it as a group. It will stay connected just like regular text. Up in the upper right hand corner is something um, that says ungroup and when you click that now all of the letters are individual so you can move them around independently. You might want to do this for a couple of different reasons if you want to set them in a different pattern like you see here if you want to adjust the size and kind of really customize something that you're looking for. Here you can see I'm just working with the letters kind of trying to create a more funky, uh, quirky look with the name and I'm moving them so that they do in fact overlap. So you see right here, they're all going to be overlap, overlapping and touching, but not in a traditional line like you get right when you use the text tool. At this point, once you have them in an arrangement you like, you're going to want to select all by putting a large click and drag box over all of the letters right there. And then again, in the upper right hand corner, you pick group and now they are all together as um, one piece. So if you're moving it around or resizing it, it works. Now I have copied. So I have two of the same image and I'm going to fill it in with a different color just so you can see the outlines. So right there, you can see how each letter has its own lines and I'll do the same on the bottom that is grouped together. However, what I'm going to do is select this bottom one here and down in the bottom right hand corner is a tool that says weld. And now you see some of the black lines have disappeared. The letters are completely connected and that means it's one piece. Now they still move as one just like when they were grouped, but the difference is when you press the make it tool. Here you can see once I pressed make it, it sorted it onto the mat. The uh, name that was grouped and welded. So grouped and welded is sticking as one complete name. The other one that was just grouped is now going to cut separate letters that I would then have to piece together in the format that I wanted. So welding keeps it together permanently when you cut it. It is most often used, I would say, when you're doing some sort of cursive, because of course you can rearrange letters like I did earlier, but more than likely you are going to work with a different font. Here I have a more cursive font that is usually meant to be connected as one group. I'll fill it with a different color so you'll be able to see those black lines. And what I'm gonna do is adjust the letter space. So I'm clicking the arrow, making it smaller and smaller until those letters are actually touching and overlapping. However, if you look really carefully between the A and the N, those are not overlapping yet and I don't wanna condense it anymore. So what I'm gonna do is press the name and then press ungroup. So now all of the letters are independent of each other. Then I'm going to press the N, D, and the A, and I am just shifting those over ever so slightly so that they will overlap with the A that is over there to the left because I want this entire word to be um, overlapping and connected as one. Now that those are in the correct place, I select the whole word again, and I will press group at this point. This allows me to resize it as I want. And then I press weld and you can see some of those black lines disappeared. So now that it is one complete cut, I can resize it. I can turn it. I can use it as I want, but it's one complete cut so that when I um, click over to make it, it all is cut in one format. I can shift it a little bit on my mat and it will come off as one piece. Whether I'm cutting it in vinyl or paper, it is all one piece connected letters. Welding isn't just for text. You can also use it with shapes. So for instance, I'm going to choose the star tool and just insert a star right here, resize it ever so slightly. 
and then I'm going to copy and paste it a total of five times. And what I'm going to do is kind of work on creating a pattern with the stars. So I have my first one. I'm going to move it right over here so it connects. You can see the very tips of those stars are overlapping. They are still individuals right now. I'll bring in the other one. I'm going to select them all and move them down so I have a little bit more room. Adding in a third one right here. Again, they are just barely overlapping. Copying and pasting again. I'll add one right here. And again, this might be something you are doing for a shirt. Maybe you're creating a vinyl cutout, or maybe you're working on a paper piecing project or creating a card and you want to create your own pattern. And this is how you can do it. So now I have these five stars. I've selected them all. I'm going to group them so that I can resize as a group. So I'm going to make it smaller to work with here. And if at this point they're grouped and they're overlapping but if I go to make it you will see that they will cut as individual stars. Cricut automatically sorts them out trying to save you paper or vinyl or whatever um, so it sorts it out. So what I want to do is press weld and now when I click over to make it you will see that I have the exact pattern that I'm looking for. This will be one solid piece when it cuts. One of the things I like most about the Design Space software is that I like working in different colors. So for instance, I have this heart design. Say I want to just kind of imagine what that heart will be like layered with three different colors. So I have my red one, I'll make one slightly smaller and change the color of that to yellow and then I will make another slightly smaller one and change the color of that to blue. Now this might be again for a shirt, for a mug, something that you're making where you're going to layer these different papers or different vinyls, whatever it is, and you see it's going to automatically sort those into the different um, papers. It doesn't matter if you group them or not. However, if you decide here they're grouped and it will still stay separate colors, but when you press weld, look what happens. It turned all of those shapes one color because you cannot weld when there are different colors involved. So now I've had all those shapes in one color. Press undo. Now I have my three shapes again. They're not welded together. They are just grouped. But now I've clicked ungroup and let's say I want kind of a different look. I want to have my hearts layered this way. They're overlapping. They're three different colors. I can group them together. I'm trying to fix the position right here. If I click make it again, I'll have three separate hearts because they're three separate colors. But if I go back and decide to weld those together, they're grouped so I can resize them. And then when I press weld, here it goes, they turn all red. You cannot weld with different colors. You're going to want to overlap those separately once you've cut out the pieces. So again, one last example involving shapes. I have a circle here and I'm going to build it up kind of like a snowman. Grouping is for when you want to resize things all together so that the scale of the pieces stays together or you want to be able to move them around together in your design space software. Grouping them does not keep them together permanently. See, I have those three circles. If I wanted to cut them out and layer them, they would be a snowman. However, I'm going to have them here. I'll group them so I can resize it very easily to a smaller snowman. And then the next step, again, even though it's resized, it's grouped, it's still three separate circles until I press weld. So once I select the shape and I'm going to change the colors here to kind of match snowman colors, you see those black lines very easily three separate circles showing you one last time. However, when I press weld, that's when they will be permanently together. You will see some of those black lines removed. Now it is one shape, no longer three separate circles. So after all those examples, let me show you my actual project for today. I am using the name Amanda and I'm creating a notebook cover for a friend and a project that we are both working on. So I have two Amandas here. One is disconnected and one is connected, meaning one is welded and one is not welded. So I'm going to delete the one that is not welded together. That's the example that I do not want. I only want to keep the one 
that is welded. And then I'm going to add another bit of text underneath. And I'm going to use the text summer 2020 because that's when we are working on this project kind of simultaneously. And I'll uh, position that underneath the name Amanda. So I have Amanda right there. I'm gonna scale this down. I will end up changing the font. And again, I'm just gonna end up cutting this out of vinyl and placing it on um, what amounts to a cutting board, but that I've cut to be a notebook cover. So I have that, it's all gonna be this mint green color. But since I typed that text summer 2020, it is all separated, it's not connected. It might be grouped, but it's not connected. So I press ungroup, and now I'm going to move these letters closer together. So I'm gonna zoom in. I would like summer to be one word, one cohesive word. So I will move the letters to where I want them. And then to make it one cohesive word, I will have to use the welding tool so that I won't have the breaks in between letters. So here I am very carefully moving the letters over. Then I will group them so that they will stay together. You see me hit the group and I want to weld it at that point. So now it is one cohesive piece that will not come apart. Now you'll see in a second here, I forget that I've ungrouped that 2020. So I have to group it back together. I don't want it to be welded. I don't want that to overlap. I just want it grouped together so I can move it all together. And then I will be able to resize the whole project. Once I get the positioning right, I'll group one big project together by selecting it all and then I can resize it to fit on the front of the notebook. It's all together and it's positioned really nicely. The last thing I have to do in this case is actually press the word attach which we will cover in a future tutorial. Then click make it and I'm ready to go. Okay, I hope that was a helpful explanation of the difference between grouping and welding and how you can kind of work with those tools. Here's my final project for my friend, a cover for her disc bound notebook that we're both working on this summer. So I hope that you have a fantastic day. All of the supplies that I use are linked below as well as a link to the Cricut website to check out their Explore Air 2. I also have a link to my bi-weekly newsletter, which is full of organization tips and crafty hacks. So consider signing up for that. Otherwise, I hope you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.